Hello and welcome sports fans to this live video streaming event from Table Rock Sports Productions in partnership with our local school districts and outstanding sponsors who make these live presentations possible. I'm Jim McCoy along with Mark McLemore, Johnny McCoy on the camera. Welcome to the Lithia Superstore pregame show powered by Siskiyou Cellular in Southern Oregon and featuring the Coquille Red Devils versus the Cascade Christian Challengers. We're pleased to bring you this game on TableRockSports.net and welcome to our home and visiting fans to the broadcast. Joe Brett is our executive producer. Our sponsors keep these events free for fans to enjoy. Let them know you appreciate their support. Please help Table Rock Sports by subscribing to our YouTube channel and thank you if you already have. Teams warming up on the floor. A little bit of a late start. The girls game just finished up. Challenger girls making a little history tonight by running their Far West League record to 6-0 on the campaign and 11-5 overall. A far cry from the days of old. Beating Coquille in that ball game, 54-35. to Yeah, nice win for the girls program. And, and, you know, it sounded like or looked like a pretty dominant performance throughout from them. Well, and again, it was another situation where it was the defense getting it done for Cascade and really frustrating the other team into a lot of turnovers. And as you know, because the Challenger boys, the MO is not much different, is that, well, you play that defense, you create turnovers, and you get breakaways. And yep. it's a much easier to score a layup than it is a contested three. Yeah, turnovers turn into runouts, which turn into layups or dunks in the case of the boys. And you know, you can get, you can really get the the, ball, the snowball rolling down the hill in your favor uh, when you can get the, you know, those transition opportunities out of that good defense. Coming into the game, Coquille with a six and eight overall record and three and one league record in Far West League play. Last week, the Red Devils scoring a 43-42 victory against Glide in that game and in other league action they uh, lost at Douglas 76 to 22 got victories against South Umpqua and Sutherland so Coquille kind of that look of a in the far west league scheme of things kind of looking like a, a bit of a bit of middle of the pack team absolutely I think that's what you're going to see from them this year they're going to maybe can have a chance to contend for that fourth playoff spot. Yeah, when you consider a league where you have the challengers, then uh, as far as probably the runner-up, Douglas. Douglas right now, number four in the state in the coaches' poll. Then you have St. Mary's. And uh, then right there, probably just right behind them, probably Coquille, the best-looking team among the others that remain, at least in terms of what we've seen so far and we haven't seen everybody yet but yeah, and I, I would I would throw North Valley in there with them right right Probably a team about, that can be competitive about right. the same level I would mm -hmm. think here so that's going to be interesting to see that how those two teams you know when they meet how that how that goes because that not could end up being a pretty important game for the final league standings absolutely and the challengers coming in well they've got a nine and five record. 6-0 record in the Far West League. They're coming off a 102-30 victory against South Umpqua on Wednesday night. Austin Maurer in roughly three quarters of play, and actually, I would say in those three quarters, he's got some good breathers in there. He ended up dropping 30 points. We saw Kellen Klecker go for 17 points off the challenger bench. And uh, good, solid games in many respects for, uh, for the Challenger crew as they look to try to gun for the three-peat in the Oregon 3A. So right now what we'll do is take a quick timeout. When we return, we'll get you ready for the start of tonight's ball game. It is the Challengers and the Red Devils right here on TableRockSports.net. 
Out of Something New sales event is going on now at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford. We are stocked up on a great selection of new vehicles from Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and of course Ram trucks. Choose from our great inventory of new 23 Jeep Gladiator and new 24 Grand Cherokee 4x4 models. Or test drive a new 24 Ram 1500 4x4. Shop online today with our online process to calculate your own payment, whether it's a lease, finance, or cash payment. Only at the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. Your game day adventures start at Pinnacle 365. Kick off your day with some morning motivation. Then add some crunch to your game day with mouthwatering crispy crunchy chicken featuring the chicken crunch box, tenders crunch box, and introducing a contender for best chicken sandwich in the West, the Big Cluck. But wait, here's the real MVP move. Download and use the Peak Rewards app and save big on fuel every day with in-store purchases. Fuel your day, fuel your fun. Pinnacle 365. Does Jordan have her 500 boards now? Yeah, that's why we brought her out up in first quarter. Okay, she and, then, and then take it out that 99. Okay, one more three. One more three. All right. Wow, cool. So we're just talking real quickly with Challenger girls coach Jeff Robertson. Jordan Jones, she's a junior, so she's got some more she can pile up, but uh, she's got 500 rebounds for her uh, career. career. And then... Um, Tim the Robertson now sits at 99 threes for a career after knocking down two in uh, in the game. By the way, Mark, I should mention this while I remember it. Coming into this game, we have Austin Maurer with 1,506 points for his career. Just fifth, uh, at 1,538 is his grandfather, Andy Maurer, who had 1,538 points in his high school career at Prospect back in the 60s, <laughs> early early 60s. And then number two on the Challenger all-time scoreboard, just a couple of games away, Marty Maurer mm -hmm. at 1,550. All-time leading scorer, Scott Morris with 1,632. And I kind of have a feeling, Mark, that that record's going to fall. Yeah, you would think so based on the right. amount, of, amount of games left and the average that we're seeing, about 30 points a game. So Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't see that slowing down any time real soon, of course. A lot of it. What, and Austin just insane uh, against South Umpqua. 14 for 16 from the floor. Yep. 11 for 11 on his, uh, his first 11 attempts of the game, and the first miss was a dunk. Yeah, somehow he missed a dunk. Yeah. Tried one of those spinning dunks, and, well, it just didn't quite work out. But then... It's just crazy some of the other things that we were seeing. Johnny and I were talking after the game. Kellen Klecker, 17 points. And now he's the team leader in three-pointers made. And just trails Jaron Frankowiak by uh, two percentage points for yep. free. Can you imagine? When we, I'm trying to think of if the Challengers have ever had two guys over 40% from three. That shot a good volume up. Uh, I, I would doubt it. I would doubt that you would find that. So, uh, at least not on the same team, obviously. No, so. no, no. So it was uh, it was quite quite a night for Cascade Christian, and good uh, you know good to see them kind of rocking right along for Coquille. They'll have their hands full this evening, and you know they'll face the same challenge that South Umpqua had against Austin Mauer. In that, uh, what do you do with him? I, I think it's kind of like, well, he's going to get his points. Maybe try to shut everybody else down. Yeah, I mean. It's real tough to defend the challengers when they have the, him playing like he did the other night. I mean, you know, he, he could add 50 easy. Yeah. Um, because they just could not, they had no one to match up with him. So we'll see what Coquille comes up with. If I remember last, right last year, they tried to play, they pr tried to play like a triangle and two against him and, um, you know, and uh, help me out with the guard. Um, anyway, they tried to play a little triangle and two against him, and that didn't really work that well. Him, him and Drew, there we go. Yeah. And put two guys on Drew and then try, try to play a three-man zone with the rest of the guys. Yeah. And that didn't really work very well for them. No. Um, so we'll see if they try to maybe go box in one or something like that tonight. Well, it'll be interesting tonight because now Coquille under the direction of first-year head coach Jake Cochran. So a little bit of a new look, and we look at uh, – some of the names that we see along the way, and Mark, of course, many of the same guys that we saw during football, football season. season. Dennis Murphy in the house. Let's see what this is about. Offer a huge congratulations to 
your football team for the state championship day one. And then someone told me if I were to go take my last $10 and bet on these guys, I might win that they would win another state championship. Yeah. And so, if any of you have any inside information, I, I would be happy to take that. Um, in all honesty, it's a real honor to be here because I have a very special uh, announcement to make. And um, here representing the Shirts and Skins, which represents the Northwest Shootout, which is an event that takes place, this is the 30th year, and the 12 or 12 of the best men and women from the state of Oregon compete in a game against the best men and women of the state of Oregon. It's been played annually, it's one of the great events, it happens in the spring, and it's my honor, on behalf of the Northwest Shootout, we would like to invite you, Austin Maurer, to our annual high school all-star meeting. Yes. This young man, well-deserved, well-earned, trust me, we all know that he will represent you, Cascade Christian, the city of Bedford, his school, the high school, state of Oregon when he plays in April, and there's a very good chance he'll be one of the best players. Early in April, I'm sure it'll be on the internet, you'll want to watch it. Congratulations, Austin. So it's not every day that we have South Bedford coaching legend, and he coached at St. Mary's before that, Dennis Murphy in the house, 698 career wins and uh, state championship back in the day when some guy named Kyle Singler was playing on the team. Yeah, some guy. Some guy, yeah. But uh, see the invitation there, we had no idea that was coming. No, we didn't. And that's uh, that game they play against Oregon versus Washington. So the mm. two states play each other with the best players in each state playing in the game. So that'll be a real honor for him to play in um, and very prestigious honor. All right, let's meet the starting lineups. Tim O'Sullivan. A junior, number three, Jericho Jones. A junior, number 11, Peyton Lee. A senior, number 23, Damian Luckman. And a senior, number 25, Lee Boy, Levi Hoyle. The Red Devils head coach is Jake Cochran. Challenger fans, are you ready? So there are your starting lineups, and Mark, we talked about the 698 career wins for Dennis Murphy, Brian Morris at 671. Yeah, catching him quickly, isn't he? Seems yes. like anyway. I think These last several years, it's been uh, definitely, uh, you know, he's had a lot of wins in each of those years with uh, state titles, and uh, he's headed, headed towards Dennis Murphy quickly. Yes, indeed he is. <clears throat> and now here at center court, Ball's in the air. 
controlled by the challengers, wearing their home whites. Cross court pass from Frankoviak to Houston. Houston drives hard to the hole. Feeds it back to Peyton Maurer, and he buries the triple. That's a good sign for Peyton right off the bat, making a three. I think he only shot two shots in the whole game against South Umqua. It's just the way the flow of the game went. And Peyton, one of those guys, unselfish enough and all-purpose enough, and a nice move to the hoop there. Jericho Jones puts the Bulldogs on the board. Going the other way, Jaron Frankowiak, and one. Jaron averaging nine and a half points a game. He's a 50, 40, 70 guy. So yeah, very, generally a very good free throw shooter. Free throw attempt is good. And I didn't even jinx him. How about that? <laughs> Amazing. 76% coming into this game, and I think that'll go up even further as the season goes along. Coquille basketball. Turnover. A turnover, a travel by Coquille. Challengers with the early four-point lead. And they were shooting up, what, about 67% Wednesday night? Yeah, almost 69 by the end of the game. And that with the reserves seeing a lot of playing time. But off of that challenger bench, you had JV player Tan Landers going four for four from the floor. Inbounds for Maurer. Oh, oh my goodness. That one just kind of rolls off. And the foul on the shot. That'll send Austin to the free throw line, averaging 29 points a game, along with 13 boards, three assists, and four blocks. On a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> just about. <laughs> Whatever they got, he's got plenty of it. Austin with his first point of the night. Second attempt, that one's good. Mauer with two. And the challenger's lead is six. Out of the backcourt, Jones up the floor to Hoyle. He's between the circles, guarded by Mauer. Austin with the defense there, and double dribble the call. You know, it's just when you're against a guy that tall, you just expend not only a lot of physical energy, but a lot of mental energy too. Well, yeah, it's definitely true. It's easy to get intimidated just by his size, and a um, little double dribble there is, you know, the challengers feast on the turnovers. Avery Houston out on the right wing. Freshman sensation. They'll go low post to Austin. He's double team. Makes a move against that double team. And we have a whistle and a foul called against Sutherland. And that's going to go. On leap. I think that's his second. So junior picks post. Up, picks up a couple right off the bat here. 14 fouls early for the, bold, uh, for the uh, Red Devils. Another free throw for Austin. Three points in the game. And he makes the second. He's no slouch from the charity stripe himself, shooting 73% on the year. You'll note I waited until after the shots. Yeah. <laughs> Basketball over in the corner. With it is Hoyle. He'll make, uh, well, actually dishes off for Luckman. Now Hoyle will shoot, shot off target. Derek Farmer had a hand on it. Ball last touched by the Red Devils. So there you have Avery Houston, number four. Number 13 is Peyton Maurer. Number two is Jaron Frankowiak. Derek Farmer is 12, and the unmistakable Austin Maurer wearing 34. Houston had a good game against South, uh, South Umqua the other night. Front Koviak, he lays it up and in. He's taking charge here early. He's got five. And now he's shooting over 50% from the floor on the year. And one of the shortest guys on the floor. Really smart about what shots he takes. You know, there's so much to be said for good shot selection. 
having confidence, and there he is with the steal. Quickly up the floor for Houston. He's there with a two-handed jam. And a 30-second timeout called. We will take one as well. Challengers lead this one, 14-2. We'll be right back. Your daily adventures with Pinnacle 365. Enjoy a little morning motivation. Freshly ground coffee, brewed from bean to cup in no time at all. Plus, with your Peak Rewards app, you'll save at least 16 cents a gallon at the pumps, so you can travel further for less in your daily adventures. Score even more savings for the road when you purchase your favorites, like Nature Valley bars, soft fake muffins, Red Bull, vitamin water, perfect bars, and watch the savings and your day accelerate. Great adventures start at Pinnacle 365. Uh, back here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion, 519 left to go. Challengers jump out to the early lead. No press by the Challengers. They're picking up tight at half court, however. Jericho Jones back to Hoyle. Hoyle guarded by Austin Maurer. Now with the basketball, making a move. Lockman picks up his dribble. Swings it over for Deegan Johnson. Johnson driving on Frankoviak. Hmm. We have a whistle underneath the Coquille basket. They're going to call it on Frankoviak. For Jaron, his first personal, first team foul for Cascade at the free throw line. Deegan Johnson. Sophomore wing, first free throw attempt, a little bit short. Dylan Westlake getting set to make his first appearance of the night. Diddy comes in with a lot of family support right in front of us. So we'll make sure we say a lot of nice things about him, which isn't hard to do, actually. Two free throw attempts, unsuccessful. Derek Farmer with it. Bull rushes out of the backcourt. Avery Houston lays it off the window for two. Nice pass that time. Draws the defense and then dishes to his teammate for an easy one. Luckman between the circles. Passes over high right wing for Leap. Bounce pass. You can see what they were trying to do there with the backdoor cutter, but it goes out of bounds. Third turnover already for Coquille here. Westlake will bring it out of backcourt. Mauer on the high post. Houston will shoot from downtown. And he doesn't need GPS to find the hoop. He's averaging about 15 points a game. Nineteen to two with four ten to go in the quarter. Steal by Houston. Quickly out of backcourt, though. Tipped away by the Red Devils. Luckman out of backcourt. And you can kind of tell he's taking measure of where Austin is. Yep. Well, you kind of have to. That's the yeah. that's part of the whole problem. You got a rim protector like that. Um, you know, you, you drive into the middle. He's coming. Well, and how many steals did they have when the challengers went to that 1-3-1 where Austin would make steals off the wing? Oh, yeah, a bunch. Hoyle with the basketball up high for Jones. Pass at high post, backing down against Peyton Maurer. Turnaround jumper is good. Peyton Leap with his first bucket of the ball game. Westlake, pocket inside, and there's Maurer with the jam. He's got six in the ball game. 3.23 left to go in the first. Driving to the hoop. Jerrica Jones. I believe we're going to have a whistle and foul called against Desmond Hockett. Pretty sure that's true. Hockett, one of those key reserves for the challengers. Guessing we'll see a fair amount of him this evening. First free throw attempt by Jones. Rims off. Hockett will come out, and Kellen Klecker, the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Averaging seven points a game after the challenger bench. Also the team leader in three-point makes now, just one ahead of Frankoviak. Klecker sizes it up, shoots, and he buries it. Nice to have a shooter coming off your bench, that's for sure. 
He's at, shooting 47% overall and 44.9 from three. He just raised that a little bit. Ball up high. Jones feeds, leap, looking for Luckman inside. Whistle goes against the challengers. Dylan Westlake whistle for his first personal foul. Peyton Mauer coming out. Derek Farmer returns. Hoyle looking inside. Shot by Leap, no good. Offensive rebound, Luckman. Canyon Luckman fouled on the putback attempt. So, Coquille getting some opportunities from the charity stripe, just not connecting on them. Well, and you can see what they're doing there. Sticking Levi Hoyle out at the three-point line, making Austin guard him out, at, out there to open up the middle of the court for them to, to the other four guys to kind of play. And the challenger's going to call a timeout. We will do the same. Challengers leading the ball game 24 to 6 on your John L. Scott scoreboard. We will be right back after these messages. Start of something new sales event is going on now at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford. We are stocked up on a great selection of new vehicles from Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and of course Ram trucks. Choose from our great inventory of new 23 Jeep Gladiator and new 24 Grand Cherokee 4x4 models. Or test drive a new 24 Ram 1500 4x4. Shop online today with our online process to calculate your own payment, whether it's a lease, finance, or cash payment. Only at the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. You're your game day adventures start at Pinnacle 365. Kick off your day with some morning motivation. Then add some crunch to your game day with mouthwatering crispy crunchy chicken featuring the chicken crunch box, tenders crunch box, and introducing a contender for best chicken sandwich in the West, the Big Cluck. But wait, here's the real MVP move. Download and use the Peak Rewards app and save big on fuel every day with in-store purchases. Fuel your day, fuel your fun. Pinnacle 365. Scoring in the ball game for the challengers. Avery Houston leading the way with seven. Austin Mowers got six, and Francovia has five. Free throw attempt missed. Houston out of backcourt. Houston, Farmer down low to Mauer. Just like that, Mauer has eight. And he throws down to give the challengers the early 20-point lead. Deegan Jones working against Houston. Luckman against Frankoviak. Kick it back out. And the bank is open on Friday night. There with the three is Peyton Leap. And Houston goes the other way for two. <clears throat> Freshman sensation. Scored 26 in his high school debut. And every now and then, you know, you'll see things that a freshman might do. But a lot of time you see a lot of things that a more seasoned player will do. Clacker with the rebound. Up the floor, Houston. Houston with the reverse. Can't get it to go, but Frankoviak is there. One fourteen to go in the quarter. Hoyle with it. Now to Leap. Leap. Spins against Austin Maurer. Deegan Johnson wearing number two. Over for Jones, cross court. He'll drive, go hard to the hole, lays it up with the left hand, can't get it to go, but chases it down on the corner. Good hustle by Jones. Now Leap has an open look. Off to the left, Austin Maurer with the rebound, outlets for Klecker. Avery Houston with it, he drives, has the opening, he lays it up and in. 
Houston with 11 in the ball game. 24 seconds left to go in the quarter. And a traveling violation. Dylan Westlake and Peyton Maurer will return. Looks like Leap's going to go take a quick breather at the end of the quarter. I was going to say they had six guys on the floor, but Derek, <laughs> Derek Farmer's coming out. Hey, hey, wait a minute. That's not right. That's too many. From Koviak, high post to Maurer. He'll spin, go to the hoop. And what can you do? He hits double figures. He's got 10 in the game. And that will end the first quarter of play. Cascade Christian leading 34 to 9. We'll be back after these messages on tablerocksports.net. Thanks for the ride. I'll see you after the game. Hey, um. Dear Katie, I've been your number one fan since I watched your first game all those years ago, and I still love watching you play. But I wanted to see you win so badly that my competitive nature got the best of me. I lost track of what's important. I thought I was supporting you, but I was really just embarrassing you. I'm not your coach and I'm not an official. I forgot my role. I'm your parent and you deserve better. From here on, I promise to keep my emotions under control. I'll cheer for you and all the other players, no matter the score, no matter the outcome. Thank you for sharing with me how I can do a better job of supporting you, your team, your coaches, and the sports you love. Still your number one fan. Love that. Getting ready to start the second quarter of play. Challengers running out early. Gonna Got go to, gonna go to the one three one here right off the bat to start the second quarter. See how Coquille handles it. So tell us a little bit about that one three one and its purpose. Well the purpose is really just to get turnovers. And usually what you get them from is, is tipped passes and or like that where uh, it tipped off of Coquille and, and out of bounds. And it's it's sort of a, a defense that you just kind of, you don't see a lot of. So when you're the other team, you tend to panic a little bit and throw the ball away or throw it into places where it gets picked off. Avery Houston, Peyton Maurer, he knocks down the triple. That's his second of the game. He's got six points. This, you know, among other things, this See, is probably the tipped ball. A best three-point shooting challenger team I think we've ever had. Outlet broken up there by Jericho Jones. He tips it out and away it goes. Of course, I can remember way back in the day when the challengers had Hess and uh, Ben Joffer, Colton Cochran, and Scotty Morris. But... Uh, this team is just loaded with it. I mean, obviously, throughout the years, we've had teams that usually had at least one or two guys that could shoot it really well. Remember when your son Joel was playing mm -hmm. back in the day, and he had, what, 11 in a game at yep. the 3A tournament? Meanwhile, there's Bauer with the stuff. And Coquille just really doesn't have an answer for him. Well, I think we have a little bit of an idea what it must have been like when Kareem was in high school, you know, back in the day, and, and you're just sitting there, and it's like, well, you know, what do you do? Yes, you just, exactly. just kind of have to admire the greatness. Well, and, and, you know, the teams that are in this league really wanted the challengers to not be in this league, and the challengers wanted, wanted to, to be not, and not be in this league, and, and yet somehow it still didn't happen, which is kind of interesting when you think about it. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, you know, with the Maurer Twins being seniors this year, that I think for everybody who enjoys watching them play night in and night out, nice move to the hoop there, is just enjoy it while it's here. Yep. Because, obviously, Mark, you and I have been doing this a long time, and we've never seen a player quite like him. No, we haven't. Oh, 
Hoyle trying to make a move with the basketball. And we'll have a whistle against the challengers. That's Peyton Mauer. That'll be his first of the ball game. It'll be the first team foul for the challengers. And a timeout called by the Red Devils. John L. Scott scoreboard, the challengers 41, the Red Devils 9. We'll be back after these messages on tablerocksports.net. Diverse venues, we got them. Year-round sports access, you bet. Race cars, soccer, paragliding, check, check, check. Medford has it covered as your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Okay, you know how people complain about how Dutch Bros workers are like, too nice, too hyper, compliment you too much, whatever. Maybe you're not nice enough. Maybe you need to get a little Dutch Bros in you. Discover the West Coast destination for those seeking more. More sunny days, more athletic facilities, more outdoor adventures, more to do during downtime. Medford is your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Second quarter, challengers up 41-9. And we have some contact here. Foul called against Kellen Klecker, his first personal foul. Get it inbound, and it's broken up by the challengers, but Hoyle able to run it down. And again, playing against defense like this is just exhausting. It is. And right now, Coquille doesn't have to ha seem to have a lot of answers either. Most teams don't. Well, it's kind of the way we've seen it so far. The Challengers scoring in the 90s against Challengers, most of the teams in their league. All their losses against 6A teams. Little alley oop action. Houston to Mauer. Austin's got 16 in the ball game. And I think he's about to come out. It looks like Peyton might be coming in for him. Luckman with the basketball against Houston. Tries to feed it to a cutter. Not there. In the ball game for the Red Devils is Zach Noel wearing number 12. He's a junior wing. And you mentioned the relentless defensive pressure in the not uh, not boding well so far for Coquille. I believe they're in double-digit turnovers already here in the first, with five minutes to go in the first half. Battle for the ball. Klecker feeds Farmer. He lays it up and in. All the starters on the scoreboard now for the Challengers. And a and one opportunity here for Derek. Derek averaging eight points a game for the Challengers. Very similar into Peyton in that he's another one of those guys that gives you a little bit of everything. Good athlete. Physical guy, too. Very good defender. It's good to see him hit the free throw because if there's a weakness in this game, it is free throw shooting. Meanwhile, Dylan Westlake fighting for the basketball. Quite a battle going on between him and Deegan Jones. Alternating possession well, goes the way of the challengers. And I think they're going to call offensive foul and a legal screen on 
Kellen Klecker. It's his second foul. Third personal foul. Excuse me. Ooh. No. Well, I was going to say, I, I don't know if I've ever seen him with three personal fouls in a varsity game. Not in a varsity game, I don't think. Jones has the basketball broken up. The Red Devils get it back. Driving the hoop. Blackman misses the layup. Quickly up the floor, Peyton Maurer. And he misses the dunk. <laughs> Only one of two misses so far in this one for the challengers. 4.14 left to go on the half. Peyton Leap with the basketball. Double teamed. And on the drive to the hoop. Luckman traveled with it. Challenges oh. get it back. Devils get it back. Dylan Westlake going to go to the bench. Hockett in the ball game. Farmer comes out. Avery Houston is back. Oh, uh, Austin Maurer. Steal by Coquille. And you can just, for Hoyle, it's just been a very frustrating evening. You're going to try to make a move, and then Avery Houston's there. And Avery's a good defender. And uh, in the process of trying to figure out what he's going to do there, he ends up traveling with the ball. Avery Houston driving to the hoop. Drives hard. Knocked away by Coquille. Peyton gets the inbound. Houston. That should be challenger basketball. Yeah, they're trying to figure it out. Yeah. I think they're getting it right eventually yeah. here. There you go. Hockett moves to the basket. Two. Desmond with his first field goal of the night. Moving with the ball, Drew Robertson. Now we've got Jericho Jones. And rejection inside. Out of the backcourt, Hockett. Gets his own miss, too. Deegan Johnson whistled for the personal. Derek Farmer coming in. Peyton Maurer coming out. So the Coquille lineup. You've got Peyton Leap, Deegan Johnson, Jericho Jones, Luckman, and Robertson. Free throw attempt by Hockett is good. Watching his percentage from the free throw line slowly inch its way up. Robertson with it, guarded by Frankoviak, and it seems like a hundred years since we've seen Jaron. <laughs> Ball goes out of bounds off of Frankoviak. Here to take care of the inbounds is Jones. Leap, Robertson, swing it around the horn. And a steal by Austin Maurer, quickly up the floor. And it is taken away by Robertson. So Coquille with some good defensive hustle. And a travel by Leap, took steps as he threw the ball. Cascade will get it back. Their lineup right now, Avery Houston, Derek Farmer, Desmond Hockett, and Austin Maurer.
Avery going to pull up and shoot. He buries it. After a couple drives, you get back on your heels, and he just pulls up for the three. He's got six. He's got 14 in the game. Luckman with the ball. Cross court pass for Jones. Looking over there for Deegan Johnson. 142 left to go on the half. Hockett will come out. Peyton Mauer will come in. Jones, leap. Two seconds on the shot clock. And it's a and shot clock violation. So challengers get it back with 133 left to go in the half. Houston makes a move, pulls up from the free throw line, shot rims out. Working his way out of that court, Jericho Jones. Cross court pass. Jones with it. Luckman tries to make a move. And we have a foul called against the challengers, against Jaron Frankoviak. And that will send Luckman to the free throw line. Opportunity to break double digits. First free throw attempt. A little flat off the back iron. They'll get another opportunity, however. Second attempt on its way, and that one's long. Peyton Maurer tried to reach up and grab it. Off of him, so it'll be Coquille basketball. Tipping it out, Austin Maurer guarding Peyton Leap. Derek Farmer with the steal up the floor to Avery Houston. And there, laying it up and in, no basket though. Foul called. And a foul called against Luckman. And Canyon Luckman whistled for his first personal. <coughs> Houston at the free throw line. First attempt, spins out. And that's the first miss of the night for the challengers from the charity stripe. Another one coming the way of Avery Houston. This one's good. Houston with 15 in the game. And they'll work it in the corner. Luckman is shot short. Offensive rebound by Deegan Johnson. He'll try it. Ball's loose. Frankoviak running it down. Out to Peyton Maurer. Houston drives to the hole. And he falls hard. And the trainer... Kurt Smet to come out to look after him. And I think this would be a wise moment to go take a quick 30 second timeout. It's game day for a family get together. Sherms has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherms Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount grocery store. You want diverse venues? We got them. Year-round sports access? You bet. Race cars, soccer, paragliding? Check, check, check. Medford has it covered as your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Back at the Cascade Christian Pavilion, Avery Houston able to get off the floor under his own power. He's talking things over with uh, 
Smet, and it looks like Kellen Klecker will shoot the free throws for Houston. Yep, Kellen Klecker came in off the bench and misses the first one. Kellen, primarily a perimeter shooter, so he doesn't get many opportunities from the free, free throw line. Misses the first. Second one is good. Prior to that, Kellen had just shot free th four free throws all year and made three of them. <laughs> Clecker out of the ball game. Westlake is in now. Leap, his shot in and out. Austin Maurer, Jaron Frankoviak. He's thinking drive. He'll pull up and shoot. Looks like he shot that left-handed. Misses the attempt. Farmer there gets back out to Westlake. He'll pull up and shoot. His shot way long. And it'll be Coquille Ball. Hoyle shoots. And that will end. It's no basket. It bounced off the shot clock. So no basket. So after one half of play, John L. Scott scoreboard challenges up 57 to 9. We invite you to stick around. Coming up, we'll have the Medford Parks and Recreation halftime report. Did you know that the city of Medford is the largest provider of community recreation classes, programs, and sports leagues in Southern Oregon? Check out the program guide for hundreds of offerings at playmedford.com. We will take a two-minute break, and then we'll be back with the stats and discussion of the first quarter after these messages. Choose a company that best represents you and our local community. Choose a company that focuses on relationships rather than transactions. Choose a company that empowers their employees and provides growth opportunities from within. Choose a company that shows compassion and rises to the occasion in times of need. Call a John L. Scott broker today. Pick it up. Let's go. Come on. Defense. Defense. What am I teaching you at home? Has this kid played before? Shoot it. Oh. Ah. Come on, ref. Open your eyes. Can't you see out there? So. Which one's your kid? The referee. You can be a parent, athlete, coach, or an official, but you can only be one. Know your role. It's game day for a family get together. Sherms has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherm's Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount grocery store. Your game day adventures start at Pinnacle 365. Kick off your day with some morning motivation. Then add some crunch to your game day with mouthwatering crispy crunchy chicken featuring the chicken crunch box, tenders crunch box, and introducing a contender for best chicken sandwich in the West, the Big Cluck. But wait, here's the real MVP move. Download and use the Peak Rewards app and save big on fuel every day with in-store purchases. Fuel your day, fuel your fun. Pinnacle 365. Whether it's game day or a family get-together, Sherm's has the quality products and prices that will make you cheer. Sherm's Thunderbird Market, Medford's original discount. First half. Welcome back to the Cascade Christian Pavilion and welcome to the Medford Parks and Recreation Halftime Report. Excitement is here with the opening of Rogax. The Aquatics and Events Center awaits you with two indoor swimming pools and water slides. The event center will host basketball and volleyball leagues and tournaments and other indoor events. Visit playmedford.com or check your activities guide to learn more about the Rogue Credit Union Community Complex, Rogue X. It's halftime and the challengers predictably out to, uh, jumped out to the early lead. Really, Mark, we're seeing a lot of shades of what we saw on Wednesday night against South Umqua. Very, very similar. And I think probably maybe about the only thing that's different is the Challengers committed even fewer turnovers. 
Yeah, that's what kind of made South Umpqua be able to get uh, more points in that first half was the Challengers turned the ball over. Not the case here as they only have two turnovers in the first half. Meanwhile, Coquille with 17 turnovers in the first half. The Challenger defense doing a good job of forcing turnovers. Um, shooting for Cascade Christian in the first half, 21 of 29. That's 72%. I'll tell you what, you're going to win a lot of ball games shooting 70%. That's for sure. Uh, the Coquille Red Devils, on the other hand, 3 for 16, just 19% in that first half. Um, scoring, first for Coquille, Jericho Jones with 3. Peyton Leap had five, and Canyon Luckman had a point, and those were the nine points that um, Coquille made in the first half. For the Cascade Christian Challengers, pretty much everyone that got in the game uh, got some points in that first half. Kellen Klecker with four points. Jaron Frankowiak had seven. Avery Houston with 15, and having a good night so far is Avery. He's got a couple of threes to go along with some driving layups that he's made. Derek Farmer has three, Peyton Maurer with six, Desmond Hockett has five off the challenger bench, and Austin Maurer leading the way, as usual, with 16 points in the first half. And, you know, you mentioned the, the domination. It's It's been that from the very beginning. Challengers off to 34 points in the first quarter and then followed that up by 32, or excuse me, by not, by 28, excuse me, in the 20, 20 well, my math skills are not working here. Anyway. <laughs> 20-something in the in the second half. So 56 to 9 and a half and holding Coquille to zero points in that second quarter, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, it has been quite a half for the challengers and uh, run through league. And, again, it's this type of situations where it's like you play the teams that are on your schedule. And, uh, you know, again, I'm sure that there are people that won't believe it. It's not the challengers' mission to go out and embarrass everybody else. That, that you go out, you coach your teams to play a certain way, and here's something that some people aren't going to want to hear, but I'm going to say it. It's like your, your kids, your starters, your stars, they put in the hard work. They put in the practice, and then you're going to tell them they're not going to play because the well, other some of them, And some of them for four years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, mean, you look at them hours. This is their senior year. Yeah. It's their last opportunity, and uh, they want to play. They don't want to sit on the bench. They want to no. play. No. So let them play, and, you know, as it is, things go in cycles. Well, and you have to get and you have to get kids ready for playoffs. Yeah. So they have to play a certain way. Right. And, right. And well, you know, for example, the press, and I don't think the challengers have used it a ton, but but it's a part of what they do, and they're going to have to use it when you go up against the teams that will be a part of that final eight. Absolutely, and you have to learn how to how to play the way that you want to play later on in the playoffs. And in nowhere in, in any of this is it saying, you know, saying anything at Coquille making, you know, or whether you're talking about Coquille or South Umpqua or Oak River or any of those teams. No. So, uh, No, you it's know. just the challengers trying to play the way they want to play to be prepared to play in a state tournament. And that's Absolutely. really what it's about. Yeah. And you'll see here in the second half some of the younger kids will get in toward the, you know, in the fourth quarter and such. Right. But, again, you know. In the third quarter, we usually see the starters come out for at least half of it to kind of get a run before um, those other guys come in the game. And I'm sure that's what the challengers are going to do here in the second half, even Absolutely. though they have this big lead. You betcha. So 2.54 left to go before we get started for the second half. The Bedford Parks and Recreation Department helps sponsor our winter sports coverage, swim lessons, basketball and volleyball leagues, a splash pad, and water slides are all at Rogax, located at the Howard Memorial Sports Park. You can reserve birthday rooms and packages with sports and splashing. This has been the Bedford Parks and Recreation Halftime Show. We'll take a quick time out and be back with the second half of play here on TableRockSports.net. After my injury, I couldn't drive anymore. I had never used the bus and had no idea where to start. RVTD's travel trainer showed me the way from setting up my UMO account to understanding the routes and transfers. Now, I'm a pro, and I help others on the bus every day. Hey, thanks, Mike, for showing me how to ride. RVTD has really opened up a whole new life for me. Bill's Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically update and improves the look of your home. 
and helps reduce energy bills year-round. Let Bill's Glass show you what you've been missing. Bill's Glass, the largest glass company in Southern Oregon for your home and auto, as well as the trusted industry leader for over 50 years. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass in Ashland, Medford, and Grants Pass. That's good. Yeah. Diverse venues, we got them. Year-round sports access, you bet. Race cars, soccer, paragliding, check, check, check. Medford has it covered as your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Okay, you know how people complain about how Dutch Bros workers are like, too nice, too hyper, compliment you too much, whatever. Maybe you're not nice enough. Maybe you need to get a little Dutch Bros in here. Discover the West Coast destination for those seeking more. More sunny days, more athletic facilities, more outdoor adventures, more to do during downtime. Medford is your sport ground, where the West Coast plays. Welcome back to the Cascade Christian Pavilion. that will wrap things up here and we'll get ready for the start of the third quarter of play. The Red Devils will come out with their original starting lineup of Jones, Johnson, Hoyle, Leap, and Luckman. Challengers with their starters of Houston, the Mauer brothers, Frankoviak, and Derek Farmer. A steal by Pay Austin Mauer, and he throws down. He almost hit his head on the backboard. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to Gus Ferrat yourself if you know no, what I'm talking about. You don't. 18 points now for Maurer. Never forget the Washington quarterback headbutting the goalpost after a touchdown, and he gave himself a concussion. Derek Farmer with the steal. And Farmer to the hoop, misses the shot in traffic. I think it was just good to get it off. I mean, you had Coquille, a bunch of defense right there around the hoop. I think he was just trying to get it up there so Austin could maybe rebound it and put it back and didn't end up going Austin's direction. Hoyle with the basketball. And... I think they're going to get Frank Koyak. And for Jaron, that'll be his third personal foul of the ball game. First oh, team foul of the quarter. Both him and Klecker have three now. So Hoyle will try to get his team going here in the third quarter. And that will be their first point since the first quarter. Yeah. Hoyle has another opportunity coming up. The second one is good. For Hoyle, that is... His first two points. Mauer in the high post, guarded by Leap. Backdoor cut by Derek Farmer, broken up by the Red Devils. Challengers with just their third turnover of the game. Hoyle, his shot in and out. Avery Houston with a basketball. Peyton Maurer down in the corner. Front Kobia, he buries it. He is deadly from that corner. That's his favorite spot. He's got 10 of the game. 6.22 to go in the third. Leap with the basketball. Leap, definitely remember him from football season. He'll shoot the 15-footer just a little bit short. Challenger's on the break. Derek Farmer. He misses the dunk. And there, the third time's a charm as Darren Frankoviak. Darren Frankoviak. Gets the bucket. Jaron with 12 in the game now. His season average is nine and a half. Luckman trying to make a move. And that's Frank Koyak's fourth foul, so they're gonna have to get somebody in for him. 
Jaron pleading his case. And they're going to get him out of the basketball game. Dylan Westlake will come in. Leap taking the inbound. Up top. Robertson in the ball game for the Red Devils. Leap will shoot. A deep three. The shot in and out. Taken back by Jones. Luckman guarded by Farmer. Five seconds. Closely guarded turnover. Now, for the casual fan, may explain that five second bite. We don't see well. A it's, ton a, of it's, those. it's no, we don't. It's a rule in high school that if you guard someone closely and they're not they're not dribbling or they're you know well they can be dribbling but they're not going anywhere, or if they're just standing there holding the ball and it's five seconds, it's a turnover, and all, that's what you saw there. All right, we've got a timeout called. We will break away momentarily, and then we'll be back with more. Oregon 3A basketball on TableRockSports.net. Your daily adventures with Pinnacle 365. Enjoy a little morning motivation. Freshly ground coffee, brewed from bean to cup in no time at all. Plus, with your Peak Rewards app, you'll save at least 16 cents a gallon at the pumps so you can travel further for less in your daily adventures. Score even more savings for the road when you purchase your favorites, like Nature Valley bars, soft baked muffins, Red Bull, vitamin water, perfect bars, and watch the savings and your day accelerate. Great adventures start at Pinnacle 365. Back here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion. We got 514 left to go on the third. Westlake will join the Mauer brothers, Derek Farmer and Avery Houston. Back on the floor for the challengers. Looks like they're going to run something special here. They got a different set going on. So it looks like we got kind of a double high post. Yep. With Austin to Peyton. A little feed up to Mauer. And he throws down. Little, little lob, back pick lob from Austin for a dunk. So he's got 20 points on the night. Peyton Mauer outlets Houston. Derek Farmer. And they'll call Derek for the Avery double Houston, Avery actually. Houston. Where, yeah, he, he tried to pass it, and it slipped out of his hands. And then when you touch the ball again, that's a double dribble. Oh, Red Devils get it back. Jones inbounding for Johnson. Johnson and Westlake have been a fierce matchup this evening. Johnson. Gibbs for Hoyle, and a steal. Farmer tipped it away, Westlake there. Houston will shoot the three, and he knocks it down. Avery Houston with 18. Kellen Klecker and Jaron Frankoviak getting ready to return. Jaron wouldn't be coming in if it was a close game because he's got those four fouls. Right. But uh, obviously they don't need him to be in the game. Leap with the shot. A little bit short. Ball loose on the floor. Timeout called. By Coquille. By Coquille. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Give us a chance to... Do a little bit of a sponsorship recognition here. Fans, it's time to tune in to the new sports voice in Southern Oregon, the Ace Sports Radio, AM 1300 and FM 107.9, featuring the Visa Network, the Rich Eisen Show, live NFL games, and local and regional programming, Ace Sports Radio. 347 left to go in the third. Well, Dylan's not the only Westlake getting into the act tonight. His little sister Hope 
out there performing with the cheerleaders this evening. <laughs> and having a ball. Yeah. Yeah, that young lady's got a lot of personality. Yeah, she tell. does. That she keeps Big Brother on her on his toes. I'm sure. <laughs> Inbounding will be Jones. Way out high. Hoyle will have to try to run it down. He can't get there in time. Kellen Klecker, Dylan Westlake, Avery Houston, Jaron Frankoviak, and Austin Maurer in the game. Frankoviak from three. Oh, my goodness. That was a deep one, and he had a hand in his face, too, and he still buries it. He's unconscious. Pass just outside of the lane is Jones. Jones working against Houston. Has it tipped away and trying to make a move and get off a shot. A little bit long on the attempt by Zach Noel. Austin Maurer up the floor, feeds it for Houston. Try to get it back to Austin. Kellen Klecker from three, and it's good. It doesn't happen often, Mark, but I'm speechless. I, I know. It's just, it's just that this team is really good. Yes, they, it they is. They really are. Kellen Klecker out of backcourt for Houston. He lays it off the glass for two. Micah Johnson, the one-time director of basketball op op operations for the Challengers in the house this evening. Good to see Micah back. Oh, yeah. A man who served enough time in the Challenger program, I'm sure he's got a story or two to tell. Missed by the Red Devils. Avery Houston lays it up, and it's good. I'm sure he, one of the things he tells, he's never seen a team quite like this one. And uh, he shakes his head in agreement. Luckman, his shot short. Kellen Clacker with the long rebound. Dylan Westlake lift. Ah, yes, off the glass. And two Mauer for the stuff. And a full timeout by Coquille. Timeout called with 134 left to go in the third. We'll be back in 60 seconds. How you doing, Micah? Thanks for the ride. I'll see you after the game. Hey, um. Dear Katie, I've been your number one fan since I watched your first game all those years ago, and I still love watching you play. But I wanted to see you win so badly that my competitive nature got the best of me. I lost track of what's important. I thought I was supporting you, but I was really just embarrassing you. I'm not your coach and I'm not an official. I forgot my role. I'm your parent, and you deserve better. From here on, I promise to keep my emotions under control. I'll cheer for you and all the other players, no matter the score, no matter the outcome. Well, that timeout went by quickly. So we're back to action here. Johnson, leap. Long jumper, just a little bit long on attempt, and Peyton Maurer there with the rebound. Jaron Frankoviak, Kellen Klecker. His shot a little bit short. Offensive rebound by Austin Maurer. Off the window, and he scores. I think one of those threes must have become a two because now they, one point that I had is no longer there. Yeah, probably. Leap. And he's going to go to the free throw line. One of them got him. I'm not sure which one. Let's see who they called it on. That one's going to go on Avery Houston. For Avery, that'll be his first personal of the ball game. Three team fouls for the challengers in the quarter. First free throw attempt, nothing but net. 
And in for the challengers comes Caden Goldade, Desmond Hockett, Brady Klecker, and Dylan Westlake. Oh, my. We got two Cluckers on the floor at once. That's right. Well, we had two Mowers on the floor once a minute ago, so there yes. you go. Westlake out of backcourt. Passes across court. Gold aid. Clecker across the paint. Shooting from long range. Shot by Brady Clecker. No good. And we have a whistle. I didn't quite catch what that was. A push on the rebound. Kellen going up and getting the rebound. Brady Klecker getting set to inbound. Gold aid off the window, and he scores. Cade Gold aid, I think he put up four the other night. He's my leading scorer on my JV team. Well, it looks like he's grown into some good height, and he's filling out some. Hoyle underneath, feeds it to Leap. Tries to get it for Jones, and the excitement, he ends up missing it. Ball out of bounds. <laughs> Kellen with the basketball, pulls up, shoots the shot. Wedged between the rim and the glass, and that will end the third quarter. After three, 84-13 on your John L. Scott scoreboard. We'll be back after these messages on tablerocksports.net. <laughs> They've only made... All right, let's go, guys. 15 minutes. Get your stuff. Bye, Mom. Have a good day, guys. I don't know what happened. Just the next time, go a little slower and figure it out. Okay, I get it. What you're going to do is you're going to take the line. Life is busy. Juggling everything can be overwhelming. We've all been there so consumed with our own lives that we sometimes forget about what someone else might be going through. Ref, come on! No, ref! There's no contact! I'm straight up! That is a terrible So goal. keep it in perspective. Because so here in the fourth quarter, they go to a running clock, and Bryson Walker into the ball game along with Tan Landers. Tan with a good game on Wednesday at the varsity level and a good game on the JV level for you today. Absolutely, and um, nice nice little in, interior pass there by Desmond Hockett into Caden Goldade, and he makes a move and earns a trip to the free throw line. Goldade making the first. He's got another one coming, and that's good. Four points for Caden in the basketball game. Bryce and Walker, all five, four of him out there on the floor. Pulling up and shooting, Jones, and he gets it to go. Brady Klecker. Traveled with it. Drags the old pivot foot. So clock continues to run. Now, what's the rule on that? Is like, is it after three if you're up by forty or if yes, you're just up forty? Five? Yep. Throw it down low, Johnson. Tan Landers. The runner is good. Landers had nine points on 4 for 4 shooting on Wednesday. Leap has a little trouble with it. Collects it. 
Feeds it over for Jones. Jones will drive left, working against Goldie. Moves to the hoop, shot a little bit short. Goldade with the rebound. Outlets for Walker. Walker quickly up the floor for Hockett. Hockett trying to make a move to the hoop. And I don't know how it can be double dribble when you don't have control of the ball. No. I don't like that call. But no. anyway, no one's going to ask me, are they? Uh, they're probably not. And at this point. Doesn't really matter. No. Five forty-two and counting left to go in the ball game. Feet over. Luckman will shoot his jumper. Just a little off target. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by the challengers. Back into the ball game for Coquille is Zach Noel. Making a move, Noel kicks it out. Roberson, his shot off target. Ball's loose, Goldate is there. Hockett making a move. Nearly has it stripped away and a foul called against the Red Devils. Now will go against Noel. His second personal. Brady Klecker getting ready to inbound. Bounce pass, gold aid. <laughs> and Klecker ends up trying to catch it. <laughs> and he's out of bounds. That doesn't work. So it'll be Coquille basketball. 4.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. Clock moving. Challengers up 88-17. And we're going to have the Legend of Landers sighting here soon. See if Tayan stays in with him. And then another pair. Of, that'll be the third pair of brothers playing in this game. Tipped away. Noel with it. Working against Hockett. He'll make a move. Corner. Foul line extended. There is Leap. Leap. Drive to the hole. A shot. Had a good look there. Wouldn't go. Now he has it. And he scores. Peyton Leap. He's got nine in the game. Going the other way, Bryce Walker misses, but the putback good. Desmond Hockett has seven in the game. Timeout called, and we will do the same. John L. Scott scoreboard, challengers leading this one. We'll be back after these messages on TableRockSports.net. After my injury, I couldn't drive anymore. I had never used the bus and had no idea where to start. RVTD's travel trainer showed me the way from setting up my UMO account to understanding the routes and transfers. Now, I'm a pro, and I help others on the bus every day. Hey, thanks, Mike, for showing me how to ride. RVTD has really opened up a whole new life for me. Bill's Glass covers the full spectrum of your glass needs and dreams. Having new windows installed by Bill's Glass dramatically update and improves the look of your home and helps reduce energy bills year-round. Let Bill's Glass show you what you've been missing. Bill's Glass, the largest glass company in Southern Oregon for your home and auto, as well as the trusted industry leader for over 50 years. Locally owned, family run, Bill's Glass in Ashland, Medford, and Grants Pass. Back here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion. I think that it looks like they're checking to see if somebody's in the book that they put in the game, as I've seen this before. Yeah. And I, I'm sure Coach Morris is saying we don't care. Yeah. Legend Landers into the lineup now. So Tan in the fall, a cross country runner. He'll run long distance in the spring. Legend, a football player. Yep. And you can kind of see as a freshman, he's been spending some time in the weight room, and it's coming along. 
Bryson Walker with the steal. He's going to glide to the hole. Two. He goes straight ahead very well, you, fast. Well, and you can tell with uh, Bryson, he only knows how to play at one speed. We saw that in football. <laughs> yes. And it's full speed. So Walker at the free throw line with an opportunity for three-point play. Free throw attempt. That one rolls around and down. Gets the shooter's touch there. Leap with the basketball, working against Goldade. He'll spin through traffic. There with the putback attempt, Lockman. Brady Klecker, his shot off. Walker tried to get there, but Coquille will corral it. Lockman working against Tan Landers. And the foul will go against the challengers. I think it'll go against Tan, actually. That'll be his first personal foul. That'll send Luckman to the free throw line. Canyon Luckman successful on the first. Second one coming up. Luckman with five in the ball game. Make that six. 92-24. Walker quickly up the floor. He'll shoot the three. Oh, in and out. The house was ready to erupt. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It's a good-looking one, too. It looked like it was going in. Leap making a move to the hoop. Count the basket. I think that foul is going to go on Brady Clacker. Leap at the free throw line. He's got 11 on the game. Make that 12. Bryson out of backcourt. Legend Landers loses the handle. And looks like a call against Coquille. Walker. Drives, balls loose. Walker steals it back. Goldade will shoot. And he knocks it home. Goldade with seven in this one. A varsity career high for him. Leap, working against Goldade, trying to make the move, and he'll get it to fall. Brady Klecker, Tan Landers, make a move, kick it back out. Brady Klecker had a moment of bunch ball there, but that dissipates. Landers with the runner, two. And that should be the last bucket for the challengers, I'm sure, Coach, now that the shot clock is off, at least when they... Challengers get it, the ball back. It will be. They'll hold for the end. And this one will be over. Leap with the basketball. They feed it. Luckman kicks it out. Leap will shoot. His shot short. Tan Landers with the rebound. Brady Clucker will walk it out of backcourt. And that will be the final score. Challenger faithful on their feet. And the Challengers now 7-0 in the Far West League and 10-5 overall. The Challengers defeat Coquille 97-29. We'll take a timeout, and when we return, we'll bring you the 
Southern Oregon Sports Commission's Know Your Role postgame show right here on TableRockSports.net. We'll be back in two minutes. My name is Mason Mahaffey. I'm the Solar Pros Manager of Oregon, and I'm also a teacher and a coach here in the Rogue Valley. Have you looked into solar panels and it didn't make financial sense? I brought Solar Pros here to Oregon to make it more affordable for working class families to put solar on their home. Solar Pros is purposely beating our competitors' prices by thousands of dollars because we are that serious about saving you money. Solar Pros PNW provides the most comfortable, educational, and personal solar experience in Oregon. Visit our Facebook page at Solar Pros PNW to see all of our projects and all the families that we are helping save money. It's the wrap of the year sales event at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford. We're stocked up on a great selection of new vehicles from Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and of course Ram trucks. Choose from our great inventory of new 23 Jeep Gladiator and new 24 Grand Cherokee 4x4 models. Or test drive a new 24 Ram 1500 4x4. Shop online today with our online process to calculate your own payment whether it's a lease, finance, or cash payment. Only at the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. Cellular, new and current customers can get any phone free. So give yourself one. Then give yourself the gift of not checking it. Get any phone free at U.S. Cellular. Visit U.S. Cellular at Siskiyou, Southern Oregon's exclusive authorized agent for U.S. Cellular, now serving Roseburg and Klamath Falls. See SOUSCellular.com for details. Don't stop! Get it! Get it! Don't go such a great It's, for, it's pretty freaking dope, dude. I, I love every single day of it. Back here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion, Jim McCoy along with Mark McLemore, Johnny McCoy on the camera, the Cascade Christian Challengers. You see that part? It is a final score. The Challengers, well... They pretty much went out and did challenger things this evening. And there's really not much. If you're the opposition in the Far West League, there's just not a heck of a lot you can do about it. The Red Devils did the best they could. But uh, no way to really successfully deal with Austin Maurer. But even if you put all that aside, at least in terms of Taking care of business and doing it well. The Challengers most definitely did that. Mark will have some stats for us, and I think they'll be quite impressive, at least in terms of how they took care of the ball, how they shot free throws, their efficiency in their offense, and the frustration and turnovers created by the defense. I was happy for Coquilla. They were able to get some fourth-quarter points, and and at least take a little bit of the edge out of that. And uh, anyway, what we'll do right now is we'll take one one-minute timeout, and then when we return, Mark will have the final stats, and that's coming up on TableRockSports.net. My name is Mason Mahaffey. I'm the Solar Pros Manager of Oregon, and I'm also a teacher and a coach here in the Rogue Valley. Have you looked into solar panels and it didn't make financial sense? I brought Solar Pros here to Oregon to make it more affordable for working class families to put solar on their home. Solar Pros is purposely beating our competitors' prices by thousands of dollars because we are that serious about saving you money. Solar Pros PNW provides the most comfortable, educational, and personal solar experience in Oregon. Visit our Facebook page at Solar Pros PNW to see all of our projects and all the families that we are helping save money. It's the wrap of the year sales event at Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford. We're stocked up on a great selection of new vehicles from Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and of course Ram trucks. Choose from our great inventory of new 23 Jeep Gladiator and new 24 Grand Cherokee 4x4 models. Or test drive a new 24 Ram 1500 4x4. Shop online today with our online process to calculate your own payment whether it's a lease, finance, or cash payment. Only at the Lithia Chrysler Jeep Dodge of Medford Superstore. Back here at the Cascade Christian Pavilion, Jim McCoy, Mark McLemore, Johnny McCoy on the camera, and Mark 
has the final stats. Yeah, I tell you, it was quite a game uh, for the Challengers uh, in all aspects as they played super, super well tonight against the Coquille Red Devils. Um, Coquille with 24 turnovers against that Challenger defense. The Cascade Christian Challengers with just nine turnovers on the night. Shooting, uh, Cascade Christian was 38 for 52. 73 percent on the night pretty nice job for the challengers staying over 70 percent for the evening coquille just nine for 40 that's 23 percent and uh from the free throw line the challengers had a great night as well coach will be very happy with 12 for 14 from the free throw line that's 86 percent coquille meanwhile nine for 15 that's 60 percent uh turnovers like i said 24 for coquille just nine for cascade christian um, and just a really nice job defensively, I thought, from the Challengers. You know, the, the three quarters that the varsity's, Varsity played, Coquille scored nine, zero, and four points in, mm. in those three quarters. So um, that's impressive defensive effort by the Cascade Christian Challengers. Yes. Uh, uh, scoring, first for Coquille. Deegan Johnson had two. Jericho Jones with three. Peyton Leap led the way for Coquille with 14. Canyon Luckman, seven. Levi Hoyle, two, and that was the scoring. Uh, and all all that scoring pretty much done by the starters uh, for Coquille. For the Cascade Christian Challengers, everyone got on the board tonight, it seemed like. Kellen Klecker off the bench with seven. Jaron Frankowiak had 15. Avery Houston with 22. Really nice night, I thought, for Avery. Three threes mixed in with a bunch of twos to give him those 22 points. Derek Farmer had three points. Peyton Maurer with six on a couple of three-pointers. Desmond Hockett, seven points off the bench. Kate Goldade, also uh, coming in late for the Challengers, had seven points. Um, Tayan Landers had four points off the Challenger bench, and Bryson Walker with three. And of course, leading the way as usual, a couple of, a few points off of his average, but basically uh, didn't really need him tonight. So 20, no. 24 on the night for Austin Maurer. Um, and I did not have him mission, missing a field goal attempt. So, um, you know, I might have missed one, but. That's uh, that's ten for ten from him for him tonight from the field, and four for four from the free throw line too. So a nice <laughs> a nice outing for him, and that's the way the scoring finished for the Challengers. Again, the final score: Cascade Christian ninety-seven, Coquille twenty-nine, and just another dominant performance by the Challengers as we've seen in league all season. Yep, and uh, well, it's just that's the way it goes. It's just it, this is a one of a kind, one time kind yeah, of team it really and, is and uh, it's an incredible run that they're on and they'll take a few days off and then they'll get ready to host glide on tuesday and then they'll do a two-game road swing to sutherland and douglas yeah and those that's going to be, gonna be inter- those are going to be interesting games just because of the douglas game coming the night after uh you know the the night after with the sutherland game yeah friday and saturday next weekend Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, total in total next week. And, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how the Challengers haven't had to play two games in two nights since they played in the uh, Les Schwab tournament. So we'll see how they play on the on a two nights in a row kind of situation, especially against a pretty good Douglas team. That'll be a good test for them, for sure. Well, we want to thank you for joining today's broadcast. We want to thank the athletic director for Cascade Christian High School, Nate Maben, for hosting the Lithia Superstore Game of the Night on Table Rock Sports and today's broadcast. Our special thanks to head coaches Jake Cochran and Brian Morse, who picks up career victory 672. Our next Table Rock Sports production featuring Challenger basketball will come up on Tuesday as the Challenger girls play host to glide. For Johnny McCoy, Mark McLemore, I'm Jim McCoy. Thank you for joining us and have a great night.